In this video, I'm going to be cleaning the sheath of two horses. The first one I'm going to call difficult, and the second one I'm going to call impossible. So in this one, you see me tearing handfuls of uh, cotton out of cotton roll and throwing it into a bucket. And this is just a repeat of the normal uh, cleaning of the sheath that you saw in the other video. I'm going to place my right hand in there, and maybe you saw in the very beginning, but I dropped a bar of soap in, which I'm using right now. Bar soap is very difficult because in many instances, the water in the barn doesn't create a good suds. So it's a, it, it creates less of the lubricant. So the friction of your hand going up in the sheath area still uh, can create some irritation. So here's a horse that's showing a normal reaction, just standing there. In fact, you could probably see that the horse is just cross-tied and no one's actually holding on to the horse at this point. The tail switches up a little bit, and the hind leg raises and basically says, hey, stop that. But he's not making a big fuss. See, nobody's holding the horse's head at this point. The owner's off to the side. So I'm trying to scrub up and trying to get a little bit more soap on this cotton, which is really difficult again. That's why I like to use liquid ivory dish detergent. I'm also trying to rinse my uh, right hand up through my wrist and lower forearm. Then I dry off my left hand so I can get better hold of the of the withers. Notice my position, how I stay forward up by the shoulder, just in case this horse wants to do a little bit of cow kick, which you're going to see in the second horse. Again, I'm going to go through the whole thing. Maybe just be quiet for a little bit as you watch me do uh, my technique of staying forward, using my right hand to clean and get dirty, and my left hand to remain clean and stay on top of the horse. The clean hand goes into the bucket, drops the clean cotton in there, takes the soap, and at this point, I'd usually just squirt more ivory soap on it. But in this case, I have to actually rub and rub and rub. Notice that the horse's left hind leg is relaxed in a position where he, the horse could kick a little bit. That finger wagging that I was doing there was just indicating that I'm taking my finger and moving it around the um, sheath, between the sheath and the penis, where some of the smegma has created some adhesions. And my fingers used along with the soap to break that adhesion down. Now, a lot of horses, this can be a little bit um, painful. And you can see the horses moving away from me, swishing the tail a lot more, trying to get away from myself. So this is a what I would call a difficult horse, and he gets more difficult as I go on, as I try and get the bean out. I always approach the horse with caution, touching my right hand to the uh, lower abdomen of the horse. Just to let them know that I'm there and I'm moving backwards. Let them know that there's a progression of events where I'm not just heading for the sheath without any warning. But this horse knows that I'm coming. This isn't something new to him. He's figured out what I'm trying to do. At this point, I'm really trying to reach up and pull the bean out of the end of the penis in the, uh, in the fossa and urethrophosa is what it's called. And as I do, it's very painful. But in this case, it's a very clay-like consistency. So it doesn't pop out as one unit, but rather a, a smear of clay. So I'll show you the tip of my fingertip here. Right there. I'll go in and get some more. I'm not really worried about cleaning it off completely because it's pretty dirty up in there. I'm just taking uh, water at this point, not soap. I'm trying to get the rest of the soap out of there and rest of the smegma. And as you can see, the leg is coming up. He's not really cow kicking. He's just bringing the leg up to indicate his discomfort and displeasure with what I'm doing. I get a little bit more of the bean out there. Now both feet are treading back and forth, tails going up and down. You can see the owner's actually holding on to the horse at this point, trying to offer some comfort or some control.
And you can see the cotton is relatively clean at this point. And that job is done. This horse has always been a difficult horse to work on. You can see here, this is my first attempt to start to clean the sheath, and his reaction is uh, a lot more pronounced, more aggressive. Uh, notice my position that keeps me safe, and the person holding the head, horse's head is on the same side as I am on. My technique remains the same, but using the clean hand, dirty hand technique, and using some uh, liquid detergent. Uh, liquid soap that makes it a lot more, um, have a lot more lubricating properties. But this horse still does not want anything to do with me. You'll see these kicks get more aggressive, more um, productive, and at some point I just say, that's it, I'm done. Little side note, this horse did get um, given away uh, right after this incident, and the person who took it was a farrier who uh, ended up getting kicked by this horse with a compound fracture of his leg. Um, I'm just about to call it quits on this horse, um, mainly because I can sense that his energy is getting higher. And if you watch, you're going to see very soon that um, he's going to try to reach me. And look at his calm behavior otherwise. I mean, he knows exactly what he's doing. He's confident and he's positive. He doesn't want me around. So part of the thing about working with a horse is knowing when to quit, when to say, okay, enough's enough. And honestly, I'm not too sure how I can go after and get this horse's sheath clean and remain safe myself as well as the uh, owner of the horse.